So to make a circle class, maybe we'll uh, you know fire this up in NetBeans too. Instead of making, I like ants. I'll make them doubles though. All right, so the double radius. And then a class square. Double side length. Class triangle. Triangles have two attributes, not just one. I mean, they could have all sorts of attributes, right? They could have their angles and stuff like that. But for calculating um, area, we really only need two pieces of information. We need their base, how wide the base is, and we need their height. So we have three classes. So we can make objects that have radiuses or objects that have side lengths or objects that have bases and heights. Well, we might want to attach some functions to them. Do we have to? Could you write a program that could calculate the radius of the surface area, excuse me, the circumference of the surface area of a circle without a class? Sure you could. Right, you just have to put a method somewhere, you know, um, double calc area, you know, and it takes a circle, right? And so you'd calculate the area, right? Double area is equal to C1 dot radius. It's supposed to be uh, pi r squared, right? It's 0.14159 or math dot pi times C1 radius times C1 dot radius, right? And then you could just create, I mean, you could pass a circle to that function. He is not a member of a class. He's actually a member of your main class, right? Whatever your main class is. Where your main method is. Where your driver is. And so then you have a public static void main class. You know, whatever. I'm not going to fill in all the right stuff. And when you're ready to make a circle, circle C1 is equal to new circle. Then you want to get the area, double A is equal to, and we're going to call our calc area function, which we would actually have to declare as static as well, because it's in the same class as this static method. Did but you ignore, missing a closing brace out there. Yep, yep, I'm missing a closing brace, but it's a good thing I'm not actually compiling it. All right, so I would call my calc area method like that, and I would pass a circle to it. And then I could print A out, and it would contain my an approximation of the area of the circle. So that's kind of the procedural oriented way of doing it. It's not a bad way. You can do this. The uh, Linux operating system is programmed entirely, well, the kernel of it is programmed entirely in C, which is not an object-oriented language. It's not programmed in C++, because the guy who invented Linux and who manages the overall project thinks that C is easier to debug and to validate and to pr prove that it's working correctly than C++. So, and he's got a point. So you could create something like this, except in C you would not call this a class. You would call it a struct, a structure. A structure is just something that's data only, right? And so my square thing over there was a structure. Well, everything in Java is a class. If you want a structure, you just make a class with no methods in it. So this is a kind of a non-object-oriented way of doing it. You know, we do have objects, but our, all they're doing is carrying around, you know, a number. So we could have just, you know, created a variable that had that number. The only what would be cooler is if down in main, we could do this. We could do a is equal to c1.get area, like that. And so the idea is, is rather than write a method that accepts a circle as an argument, that has a circle parameter, you write a method that already knows what kind of data it has because it's attached to that circle. And so we could do that. And why don't we go ahead and fire up NetBeans and play with this a little bit if you want to play along. Now, I think in this case, I'm going to do what I tell everybody not to do, and that's going to be sticking multiple classes in the same file. All right, I have no idea what lecture number we're on. 
Can we unpeat? All righty. So, lecture P. I'm going to take the package out of it when I create it, right? I'm just going to delete this part before the period just so it doesn't put the word package in it. All right. So here's the way I want it to work. I'm going to go ahead and write down here the way I want it to work. You know, you can just kind of blue sky the way that you want your package, your classes to work. I want to be able to do something like this. Circle C1 is equal to new circle. And then C1 dot radius is equal to 3. Whatever. And then let's get the area. Double area is equal to C1 dot get area. We could also get the circumference if we wanted to. Double circ is equal to C1 dot get circ. Circ for circumference, not circ for circle. Maybe I'll add you in there. All righty. I yeah, delete all these comments that kind of clutter things up. You don't have to do that, but I'm not gonna. All righty. So I'm gonna make a circle class that has this piece of data. That's data, right? We don't access it with parentheses because it's data. And then we have these functions, these methods. And we know that they're methods because when they are called, they do have parentheses. So what's our keyword for creating a class? It's just class. Yep. And then... What would be a good, data, a good data type for our radius? We could make it an int, but what if the user wanted to know the area of something with 0 0.5? We could make it a float or a double. Double radius. All right, we've taken care of that. Now we need to know how to calculate the area and how to calculate the circumference. Now here's what people always do. Oh, I'm going to need to calculate the area. And don't type this, guys. <clears throat> Double area. And then, well, we better make a, uh, you know, a get area function. So like I said, don't type that. Double get area. And what am I going to make it do? It's going to return this dot area. It looks like, kind of like a getter. This is not good because nothing is ever set area. Area is something that needs to be calculated. So maybe, and I'm still doing wrong stuff here, and I'm going to delete it all. Maybe I'll make something called calculate area, and then it's going to calculate the area. It's going to set this dot. No, don't do that. The reason why is this is your state, and this is the product, this is the result of a calculation from your state, right? You don't want to have to call a new method called calculate area every time you want to call get area. And then you might think, well, okay, well, I'm going to calculate area here, right? Yeah, area is equal to 3.141, whatever, times radius, times radius, right? And then I'm going to return this. Well, that works. That would that we could get a, a functional working program like that. But this should be calculated every time. You don't just want to calculate it when you call one function because what if the user changes it down here, right? What if they later on set c1 dot radius equal to seven? All of a sudden, we've got what's known as stale data. Right, he's holding on to the area, but it's stale data, it's old data. The radius has changed, and the area didn't change with it. So then we think, okay, I'll put a set radius function, and every time it changes the radius, it also calculates the area. No, things that need to be calculated should not be stored as part of the class. Volume should not be a member of the class. Surface area should not be a member of the class. I hope that makes sense. 
if you're doing a calculation, you probably ought to do that calculation every time. If it's dependent upon some data in here, you don't want the uh, possibility of getting stale data where somebody could change the radius or they could change the, uh, you know, the side length of the square and then suddenly the area member of the square is invalid, right? They set the side length equal to zero, but last we saw the area is equal to one. Now that's an invalid area. So that's called stale data. And you want to avoid stale data by not putting your results, your calculations, you don't want to cache your results inside. Now the only time you would want to cache a result is if it was an extraordinarily expensive calculation. Right, like if it took two seconds to go and perform that calculation, then yeah, maybe caching it would be a good idea. But uh, it just for simple multiplications and stuff like that, that the computer can do a billion times a second, we don't need to do that. So I'm not going to make get area do that. I'm going to make area calculate the variable and return it every time it's called. So I need a variable to hold a result. I could call it area, I could call it result, I could call it anything I wanted to. Double A is equal to three point math.pi. Let's do math.pi times, you know, radius times radius. And if I was really cool, I would make it this dot radius times this dot radius, but that's okay. And then down here, return A. And if I was really, really cool, I would call that area rather than just A. Calling it A is kind of lazy, so I'm going to change that to area. So, why can't you just return exactly math.pi times A? You can't. You can't. Do I need that line? Nah, I don't need that line. I could do this. Don't make this change, by the way. The reason I break those up into two things is because sometimes I want to be able to print the area out before I return it or I want to be able to set a breakpoint on it and if you're returning if you're calculating as you're returning it there's no way to print it out inside that method right mm -hmm. unless you calculate it a second time and then print it out so I like separating them but you don't gotta unless I tell you to this is a perfectly valid way of doing it it may even be better because then you're not tempted to try to store that result anyway anywhere, right? You're not tempted to go and create a variable to hold it. So if you feel like doing it like that, that's cool. Now everybody add a get circumference as well. The formula for circumference is 2 pi r. I don't really see now why I decide, why I was saying I want this to be in the same class as main. You could be cooler than me and go and create a circle class and move all this code over there if you wanted to. It does make it easier for you to upload a solution, right? Just give me a single file. Double, get circum, what am I going to put here? I'm going to put return what? Two times math.pi times radius. So typically when you're designing classes, people go in one of two ways. One is they think, oh, I better define all my data. And then I'm going to come up with some methods that manipulate that data. Sure, that's one way to do it. The other is to think, what are the methods that I'm going to use? And then create your data that needs to do that. Right? If I think of a circle, then I'm going to think, what do I want to do with it? I want to be able to get the area of it. And I want to be able to get the circumference of it. So I think of the methods first, and then I think of the data that needs to support those methods. Or you, yeah, you think, okay, I know what kind of data my circle needs, and then I'm going to add the methods right, that support that. Either way, you just got to take care not to put 
variables in here that are calculated. You don't want to put variables, member variables, that should be calculations. If this is the only way to get the area, then we're sure that we're not getting stale data. We're sure that we're getting fresh data every time, because every time we call them, it's going to be a new calculation based on the radius. And like I said, if it's an expensive operation in terms of computer time or cycles, yeah, maybe, maybe that's a good idea, but not for something this easy. So that's our circle class. Now, if we were to make this an awesome class, awesome isn't cluttered up and, and harder to read and stuff like that, then we would follow my little rules. You know, um, name was uppercase, you know, or, you know, initial cap, but I had much better rules. What were some of them? Yeah, make our data private. Make our methods public. And once you do that, you have to have getters and setters. And a constructor if it makes it easier to use. And I should put constructor parentheses S because maybe you need more than one constructor. Maybe you need that default constructor and another kind. All righty. So if I was going to do that, I've already shown you how you can cheat, right? How you can get it to add all the getters and setters for you. Or I can just buckle down and do it myself. A good thing to do is just to hit or type in private for your data. Yes, sir. Uh, was it choose the method then calculate field? Right, right. Refactor and recapsulate field. So sometimes you can decide whether you need getters and setters at all just by making your data private and see what breaks. If nothing breaks, great, right? Why add extra code? It's not like you have to add a getter and setter to every single variable in it. Right, there may be variables that only matter inside the circle class, but that the outside class doesn't need to know about. But once I did that, it did break some code. I see the red error here. I go down there. All right, that's not good. So what do I need? I need a setter. Right, I need the ability to, the ability to change the radius. And if I'm going to provide the ability to change the radius, I may as well provide the ability to get it. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to add a getter and setter for our radius variable. Setters don't need to return anything, so we usually declare them as void. Getters are returning, so they need to be declared as the same type. Yeah, let's do the uh, getter first. Whoops, I'm already making a mistake. What's dumb about that? If I make the get radius private, then what's the problem? It won't be able to access it anymore. Right, the main code won't when be able to call it. When would you want to do a thing like that, though? Yeah. When would you want to do a thing like that, by the way? You may want to make some methods that are private. If the If you don't want your calling code... Right, maybe this class is supposed to be able to open a log file and save some data to it and then close it. Well, you may not want the main code to be able to monkey with those functions. You may want all of that managed entirely by the class. So you may add some functions, but you make them private so that the calling code won't, the, uh, the driver, the main code, won't be able to use it. Just like if you tell me to go shopping at Walmart. I'll go into my car and I'll drive there, but you don't need to know that I'm pressing the pedals to my car and stuff like that. So that stuff doesn't have to be public. All right, so public double get radius. It doesn't need to pass any data in because we're getting. So I'm just going to return this dot radius. And I could leave the this keyword off because there's not going to be any naming conflicts. And now I'm going to do a set radius. Now set radius doesn't need to return anything. 
It could. It could return a Boolean about whether it was successful or not, if we were to put some limits on it, like it can't have a negative radius. But we're not going to make it overly complex. So public void set radius, but it does need to accept a value. It does need to set an argument. So we have to put in a parameter. I think the parameter ought to be the same type as the data that it's setting. So double radius. And here is where we do have to use the, this keyword. This dot radius is equal to radius. The reason we need the this keyword is because otherwise we would have a conflict. We'd have a naming conflict. If we just said radius equals radius, it'd be trying to set the parameter radius equal to itself, which is dumb. So we have to specify, no, that first radius is the one that's a class member. And by the way, this is my favorite uh, way of writing getters and setters all on one line because they're, they're not really so important that they need to take up five lines each. Well, I won't say that they, they're not so important, but they're not complex, right? So if you see me do it that way, great. If you would like doing it that way, great. If you want to space it out all like that, that's also great. Just however you want to do it. And... Any other professor here might yell at you for doing that. Uh, you're not formatting it correctly. But I think it's just as easy to read like that. Okay, so now if we go down here, well, this is wrong still. What do we need to do to fix that? We still need to change the value of the radius. We still need to set the radius. But it's private, so we can't do that. What are we going to do? Did we add a function for changing the value of the radius? No. Well, what's that one? Yeah. That one lets us change the value of the radius, right? So, let's use that there. And what would the syntax be? I know out of these six people sitting here, five people sitting here that one of y'all knows I'm going to change the radius. Set dot radius. Yeah, well, not set dot radius. Right. So, it's a member of the object, right? It's a member of the class, so I'm going to have to prefix it with the object name, c1 dot set radius. Set it equal to three. I sure can. All right, let me come look. Under set radius, it wants me to do a return. Did you declare set radius as a double? What? As a void. I didn't do a void. Okay, go ahead and put a void there. It's interesting that, that I was pretending that that was going to be valid code. Oh, return type required. So that's the return type. But if it's not returning anything, we still have to call it void. That's the main version? Yep. So if we're going to do a triangle, I already know basically what, how we would use the class. Triangle T1 is equal to new triangle. And then if I was going to get the area of the triangle, what would I need to do before I could get the area? Well, what is area dependent on? Base times height. So, if we were going to do it the wrong way, 
without getters and setters, we would type, you know, t1 dot base is equal to 10, you know, and t1 dot height is equal to 20. But we're cool enough to know about setters. So instead of trying to set a variable directly, I want to call a setter. So what would that probably look like? t1 dot, t1 dot set base and t1 dot set height. And then when I'm ready to print the area, well, I already have a variable called area, so I'm just going to reuse it. Area is equal to t1 dot, what's a good name for something that calculates the area? Get area is good. I mean, you could call it something else, like calculate area or return area or something like that, but git makes sense to me. And then we could print it out. Yeah, you're right. This, this is wrong. This is wrong. I almost did some C-sharp there. C-sharp allows you to define getters and setters where you still use the, this nomenclature for it. But we don't have C-sharp. So thank you for catching that. All right. Scroll up and start a triangle class that supports this stuff. So what are you going to need? You're going to need a set base and a set height. And that kind of implies what about the data? What pieces of data do we need in it? Yeah, you're going to have to add. Pardon? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's all broken because we don't have a time. Yeah, right. it, it will change the value of the area variable. That's right. So, so, yeah, if we were going to use this area later, it would be dumb to reuse the variable. So you could create a new variable if you wanted to. Okay. Like area 2 or T area for triangle. Yeah, good point. We're reusing a variable here. That might be an idiotic thing to do. We may need the area of the circle later. So, call it area C and then area T, something like that. So go ahead and scroll up and start creating a new class called Triangle that supports our stuff. What if I had my good old triangle here? And because I was a dumb teacher and I told you all to put, you know, well, I haven't made a triangle, have I? I was a dumb teacher and I told you to put it in the same file, right? Which I shouldn't have. All right. So what if I, you know, it doesn't really matter in what order you put things. You could put things below, you know, at the bottom rather than at the top. It would still work. What if I put it there? No, it's not going to work anymore. You can put a class inside a class. That means that that class is probably only accessible inside the other class. But it has a side effect. Since this method is static, and like I've been saying, static methods can only call other static methods. Well, static methods can also only call static classes. We would have to define this as a static class, so we'd have to stick the word static in front of it. So. I really should not have made it part of the same class because if I didn't done that, then it wouldn't have been possible to accidentally put it inside the other class. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do a triangle too, see how quick I can do it. Class triangle. I know I need two variables, double base, double height. I know that I need setters for those. And I probably ought to provide getters too, but since they're not returning anything, I'm going to declare them as void. Set base. I seem to like ints. So I keep typing int and then backspacing over it. And this dot base is equal to base. Now, why did I put this dot in here where I can usually get away without doing that? 
Well, watch the color change if I remove that. Right now it's green to indicate that it's hooking up with that one, right? If I delete this and then I highlight that, what's it highlighting now? It's going into the cell. Yep, it's highlighting the parameter. So, don't want that. All right, so that's set base. I'm going to do the same thing with set height. Let's start height equals height. And then I'm going to need get area. Somebody give me a syntax for get area. Public what? Public. All right. And then get area, parentheses. Do I need anything? Do I need any parameters? No. Right. I don't need to pass in a base or, an, or a height because our triangle is already keeping track of that. So what am I going to put inside here? Yeah, I could calculate the area and then return it, or I could just return it, return the results of a calculation. So double area is equal to what? Yeah, base times height divided by 2. And then return area. All right, for those of y'all who hadn't gotten the block class working, is it making more sense now? I'm making eye contact with a couple of y'all. Does it make more sense? All right, all right, good deal. We're going to talk about UML because the last homework asked for UML. We may not get to the turtle. Yes. All right, so if I was going to make a UML for these guys, what I need to do, and I think I forgot to make my data private, right? Since I provide getters and setters for these guys, I should have made these pieces of data private. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Or maybe I'll just pretend I did on the other one. So I'm going to do a UML for the triangle. Just going to draw lines, dashes, whatever, and I'm going to put the name of the class. And then I'm going to list the members. I like listing the members above the methods. And the triangle had two members. It had base and it had height. And they were both of type double. If they were different, then I would put another word there. If they were ints. And we made them private. Or we shut off. So I'm going to put minus in front of them to indicate that they are private. All right. And then what's the last section going to be? Our methods. And these are public methods, so I'm going to put plus in front of them. I don't remember whether the book has us put plus in front of them. But let's see. We had a set base, and we had a set height, and they both took a argument, so each one had a parameter. One took one called height, whoops, one took one called base, which was a double. I like the syntax. Why did they make the syntax exactly backwards? I don't know. But what did set base return? If we went and looked at our code, what is its return type? Not set. Pop back over your code and tell me what set base was defined as. What's its return type? Yep, yep, yep. So, void or the book shows not even putting a return type. Whatever, we're better than the book. And then set height took a parameter, height, which was also a double, and it was also declared as void. 
And then we had one more function as a member of our class, unless you also put getters for our variables. I didn't put getters in mine. So our last method was also public, and what was it called? Area. Yeah, get area. And did it take any parameters? Or does it have any parameters? Does it take any arguments? No. Nope. So I'm just going to put nothing there. Now you would think, well, why don't I put void there? I don't know. I didn't invent the language. Okay. But it does return something. What's its return type? All right, and that's it. I think I only had three members in it. Six, yeah, three member variables. That's what I think I had. So that is the UML for the triangle class. And this is covered in the book, so you can read more about it. I could make you all do the one for the circle, but you've already got homework to create, you know, one for the block class, so... Why'd you labor it? I'm not sure we're going to have a new one. I think the last one we did. We've had people who were stuck on the earlier block assignments, so I'm not sure we're going to have a new homework assignment. How about watching that 46-minute video? That's your homework. I'm kidding. I'm not going to make that worth any points. All righty. What I would like to do now, I'm just all eager to use it, is let's go and use an or excuse me maybe we'll do more of this on Tuesday but if you go to the content section of our D2L you'll see something called turtle.java So go to content, I hope it's there, otherwise we won't use it. Go to notes, and down here at the bottom is turtle.java. All you need to do is open it and select everything, right? Just hit control A. You know, that's even easier than highlighting and selecting it all. But if that's what you want to do, you could do it like that. But honestly, just click part of it. It's a huge class and hit control A to copy it. You know, right click copy, however you like copying. And then go back and add this to your default package or whatever package you have if you uh, left the package keyword in it. So new Java class, call it turtle. And then paste it. Replace everything except for the package word. If you have a package word in here, you know, you better not delete that. Delete everything else and then paste. And now we have a turtle class. So what is a turtle? Some of y'all took my fundamentals and so you played with these before. What a turtle is... Oh, that's not going to find it. Okay, fine. I can't find one. The turtle was originally a turtle robot and it had a pin and you could tell it to go forward and it would draw on a great big sheet of paper. You could turn it, tell it to go right, it would turn right, you could tell it to lift the pin so it could move somewhere without it. And so it had a programming language. I think Logo or Forth was the one that was built to support the turtle. But now turtle libraries have been you know, put all over the place because it's fun, fun to use and you can learn some fundamental programming techniques with it. So, what you needed to do if you want to play along, and it's okay if you don't because we're going to do it again, is go to Content, Notes, scroll down to the bottom of our notes, like I could find it, there it is, 
and grab that turtle.java, copy everything out, and paste it into a class called turtle.java. So let's create a turtle. And I don't like this turtle class, so if we had time, I would write something that encapsulated it. And what do I mean by that? Well, I don't think it's as easy to use as the turtle classes that I like to use. But anyways, go back to main now. Go back to your main method, and we're going to create a turtle. Doesn't matter whether it's before or after it. So I'm just going to create it at the bottom of main. I'm going to put a comment here that this is the end of the main method. And so turtle t1 equals new turtle. That makes our turtle. And he's complaining. Oh, I already have a T1. Excuse me. Okay, I'm going to call my turtle Sam. Turtle Sam is equal to new turtle. And I'm going to tell him to paint something. Paint, going zero degrees, make a line that's 50 pixels long. And then Sam.paint going 90 degrees, another 50 pixels. Now let's see what that does. Now if we were using the Python turtle library, it's really cute because it animates the turtle all over the place and we can watch it draw. This one just draws it instantaneously. But if I run it, hopefully I see, boom. See, it went that way and then it went that way. Now for some reason all these turtle libraries assume that due north is that way, right? Zero degrees is that way. So what happens if we want to make it go 45 degrees? Well, I'm going to add one more here. Sam.paint, and it's not going to do what I want by the way. Spoiler alert. There. What did it do? Well, it turned another 45 degrees. So in this implementation of the turtle, this is not the absolute compass direction. It's how far it's supposed to turn to the left. And if you wanted to turn it to the right, you would put you know, a minus sign in front of it. That would turn it 45 degrees to the right. Now here's the way I want it to work. And here's what we'll probably do Tuesday. I want to be able to do this. Sam, go to the right 90 degrees. And then Sam, draw a line that's 50 pixels long. Now Sam, go to the left, uh, you know, 70 degrees. I'd rather do that. Now this mixes the two concepts. This has you turn and draw a line at the same time. And yeah, that works. Maybe that's even cooler. But the way that I think about it is I, would, I want to tell the turtle what way to go and then tell them how far to draw. So that's what we're going to do to it next. I could just write some methods, right, and put them inside this class. That would kind of do that. But there'd be a problem since turtle is declared between here and here. If I went and I added a write method or a draw method to the same class, don't type this because I'm going to delete it, public static void draw, you know, and it took an integer or something like that, you know, I would have a problem. I can't do Sam dot, you know, draw, you know, and then, you know, whatever my parameters were supposed to be. It doesn't know what Sam is. How could I fix that? I have something that's declared inside one method, but I want to use it in another. I could think of two solutions. One is I could just pass Sam into it, right? This is a, this is a method. I could send Sam into it. Well, I could. Turtle dot, you know, or turtle Sam like that. Wish I could type. Now I kind of wish I had made y'all do this. But they called it paint rather than draw, so I would rename that to paint. All right, so now, well, these were all supposed to be just examples, so I'm going to delete those. But I'm going to go ahead and call the draw method now. Draw, and I want you to draw a line that's 200 long. Okay, so that reduces the complexity. 
but I still have to pass the turtle into it. Now, now this is just wrong, right? I'm encapsulating it, but it, it's, it's not cleanly encapsulated. I'm making some functions that take the turtle. What I'd rather do is to be able to do something like sam.draw and only provide one parameter, right? I'd like to be able to do that. Oh, it still wasn't ready to work. Now it is. Now if I ran it, it would work. Right, see, it, it drew a line that was 200 long. All right, delete all that, because we're going to come up with a better way of doing that next time. But let's make something that draws like a star. So let's make a for loop. For int, I don't know, x is a good enough counter. X is equal to zero. X is less than five. Our star is going to have five points. X plus plus. So what am I going to do? Sam dot paint. The first thing I'm going to do is just turn him. I believe the right number of degrees to draw star is 72. I played with this earlier today. And I want him to go forward zero pixels. Now... I'm going to do a sam.paint, and I don't want him to change direction, but I want him to go forward 100 pixels. I could combine those into one move if I wanted to. Right, I could just make it like this. Why not? Why not? All right. So when that runs, hopefully it'll draw a star. Nope, it drew a, uh, a pentagon. Excuse me for cheating. All right, a five-pointed star, and I never quite figured out the reliable formula for like calculating a star with seven versus nine versus five. But if we do, let's do this. Double angle is equal to 180 minus 36. And then let's draw that like that. I think that'll do it. Now, why did I customize it like that? So that we could easily change the angle, right? We just put a different number here. Yep, drew our star. What could we do if we wanted to draw a triangle? We could make two changes. What changes would we make? Ignore the fact that this is a complex operation. We could we could just write, we could actually get that number. Yeah, if I could do that in my head, that'd be awesome. It's like 106, yeah, 144. All righty. So, anyways, say we have this code, but I want to change it to draw a triangle rather than a star. What two changes could I make? Well, how many points does a triangle have? Three. Has three, so what change would I make? Three. Yeah, I need to make that X less than three, so it'll draw three points, three corners. And then, what is the angle of a triangle? Well, if it's a perfect triangle, if it's a perfect polygon, it's 360 divided by the number of corners, and so it's 120. Now it's going to draw a triangle. What if I want a square? You make it 90. I would make that 90, and I would need to make one more change. Three x is less than three, x is less than four. Yep. That making sense, guys? Yeah. Yeah. So, if we get this to work the way that I want it to, we're going to be able to have more fun with it. Last thing we could do, nah, 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 that's enough. Let's, let's stop here. We'll make a draw, a drop box for what we've done. We're Kind of planning on coming back to the turtle class because what I want to do is I want to make our turtle better. I want it to support some methods that they don't have here. Specifically the turn right, the turn left. The turtle to get a function to work. Let me make the drop box and then I'll wander around and help folks. So I think we have enough homework queued up. So some people are stuck on the blocks. You might consider extending the deadline a bit because we I'll do that. Yep, I'll I'll do that. Push it 
Yeah, I'll just push push everything. everything back to next Monday. Yeah, but some people are stuck on it, so I'm extending the deadline. And we didn't really cover UML to, until today. I mean, I know I already covered it, but. Yeah. Give everybody a chance. That's part of the last block homework. Or one of them. One of them said draw a UML. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but the last one you gave us. Okay. All right, so there is a Dropbox P. Well, at least you say it. I don't know what the instructions say, but you say Let's find it. out. Is the one that just came out? Or what? Oh, yeah, it's the one that just came out. That one's due October 15th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. But I'm going to set the other two block assignments to be due next Tuesday. Give everybody a chance to finish it out. Next Monday, actually. I want people to work over the weekend. Make one of them due Monday and one of them due Wednesday. That seems fair to me.